All right. All right, you ready? Ready. Cool. Hello, my name is Jaime. And my name is Marina. Welcome to volume two of Latinarte. It's been a while. <laughs> It has been a minute, uh, but we're back and uh, we're better than ever. <laughs> so excited to be back. So today we're going to be talking about Ligia Clark. Ooh. So, the artist's abandonment, Ligia Clark. Early life and career. So, Ligia Clark was born in 1920 um, in Belo Horizonte. Uh, in 1938, she married um, Aluizio Clark Riberio. And in 1947, she began study, studying art with Roberto Burli Marx. Um, she began her career as an artist uh, while studying with him. Um, in 1950 and 1952, she lived in Paris and continued studying art. And then in 1957, she participated in the National Concrete Art Exhibition in Rio de Janeiro. Um, and that was her first art, exhi art exhibition. So the concrete art movement um, was basically a movement surrounding uh, precision and mathematical and scientific representations in art. And um, she aligned with this movement mostly because it kind of saw art in a completely different perspective, which she likes to explore. Um, and she originally was one of the, I guess, founders of the concrete art movement. Um, but as time wore on, she kind of liked the concrete movement uh, less and less. And we'll get into more about what the concrete movement fully was. But um, she liked the concrete movement less and less. So you'll notice that some of her works here aren't as precise and aren't as exact. See, like the one in the top right is very precise and exact, whereas the one on the left is a little more smooth and organic. So this is just a mixture of some of the works. And at the bottom in the middle here, you'll see um, one, to, one of her uh, sculptures that are called uh, critters and or beetles. And, um, and she basically made those as interactive sculptures that were meant to be interpreted by the viewer and weren't supposed to have any reference to exterior cultural matter. And um, the idea is that the viewer puts all the life into the piece and it doesn't fully exist as an art piece without the viewer. Right, it's very interesting. So the concrete art movement, as I said before, surrounded precise representations of mathematics, science, And it also had a strong emphasis on art existing without reference to external context. So talking about like the hard truths of uh, nature and uh, like sight and human experience, but not referencing humanity, not referencing uh, like, like a picture of an apple, like, or anything that really looks like anything. It's supposed to be precise and mathematical. Um, so Ligia was one of the key figures in this movement. Um, but eventually left the movement and founded the Neo-Concrete Artistic Movement. So the Neo-Concrete Movement is, um, like the name says, a new concrete movement that did have a, a approach to having no external context involved in the pieces, but it almost completely ignored the mathematical and scientific aspect of the concrete movement, and it was a lot more organic. A lot of it had to do with human body, sense, and experience. Um, it was a lot less European in nature because the concrete movement started in Europe. And this was a lot less um, concrete in nature. Um, and it was it was more towards uh, the Brazilian uh, focus on life uh, because she was Brazilian. And so it actually had some influence. It's like a precursor to the Tropicalia movement. So this is one of her sculptures, and this one's called The Inside is the Outside. And it's just an example of uh, the different interactive aspects of the pieces. So to Paris. Um, in 1964, there was a coup in Brazil. It was very similar to the famous 1976 coup in Argentina, um, and it was US military backed. Um, Under the new dictatorship uh, that resulted in that coup, there was a act um, that essentially, and major oversimplification of events, but um, essentially censored a lot of media, theater, art, um, and there was a lot of severe actions taken against the creators of the work, 
Um, so it was kind of dangerous to be an artist back then simply because art led to, led to a lot of free thought, which is what they didn't want. So Ligia fled uh, to Paris after this enactment and uh, started teaching art at the Sorbonne, which is one of the uh, biggest universities in Europe and the world. And um, as time wore on and she had more and more experience in the world, she started to see an aspect of art that she couldn't get behind. So she is very well known for being the artist who abandoned art. She publicly announced that she was abandoning art. Basically what she meant by this is that she didn't want to be supporting the kind of capitalist and, um, and classist aspects of art that were very strong in higher society. And uh, since she had gotten popular enough to be at that point, she kind of realized that that was uh, such a strong aspect of it and decided to leave. So she is very commonly known for being the artist who abandoned art. Um, right. It's it's like a strong like position to take on something that's you know become your life for so long. Content warning. In this next section, we will be discussing abuse, self harm, and political violence as it relates to the life of Legia Clark. If you're sensitive to these topics, you might want to set this one out. And we'll see you on the next episode of Latinarte. So one of the things that's very important in Ligia's life and career that wasn't presented in the presentation was the fact that she was abused when she was a child. Her father was abusive and a lot of it had to do with her gender. She was, um, she was a woman and uh, she was treated very badly because of it. And it eventually led to a lot of uh, self-hatred and internalized misogyny and um, self-harm at one point uh, because of that much pressure on her. Um, and so you can kind of see that in her career like playing out with that information, there's a lot more context provided to the evolution of her artistic career. Yeah, absolutely. And that would make sense if she was abused specifically for being a woman, then it kind of makes sense how, she, like why she would be um, drawn to the concrete art movement. It's if she has this kind of like gut, um, like this trauma response to womanhood and to her own, um, like identity and sense of self and her own body then something that's more like abstract and mathematical and precise that kind of rejects those organic shapes um like i could like i can definitely see how that would be uh, how that would be appealing to her in that moment um i she does have when she does eventually leave the concrete art movement and joins the new con neo concrete movement, which um, explores more organic shapes and even takes inspiration from the human body and um, human experience, I can definitely see that as like a sort of healing process of okay, she's willing now to explore these concepts that cost her so uh so much distress in the past absolutely and because uh, the concrete movement was so focused on having no external context mm -hmm. she still kept that in the neo-concrete movement but it was specifically in the concrete movement a the, it's no context in in any other there was no humanity in it it was math mm -hmm. science and the truths of nature i guess but not in any human sense. And she actually she actually has quite a strong uh, focus on the human experience and all of her future art uh, mm -hmm. past the concrete movement. So yeah, absolutely. Um, I do want to bring up the coup that forced her to flee to Paris. Because um, if my memory serves correctly and the then the time period of that coup is just right around the same time as the rest of Operation Condor, which, uh, if you don't know, was, or if anyone in the audience doesn't know, was a, like, un 
basically a series of CIA backed coups and um, like taking down um, like the left wing governments that were starting to be elected in um, Latin America, especially in South America, not so much in Mexico, more in South America as a part of the Cold War. Like the CIA backed coups were kind of that U.S. effort to kind of uh, make sure that communism doesn't spread. Um, and so the U.S. would provide uh, like military funding and weaponry to these uh, like right wing extremist groups so that they could go and take over the government. And what's most interesting about that in the context of her career is that you can see her sort of acceptance of um, of being Brazilian in her art when she transitions mm-hmm. to the neo-concrete movement, which has more Brazilian influences. Absolutely. And it's kind of tragic that like after that happened and after she's come to accept it, she's leaving and she's gone and she's back mm-hmm. to Europe um, because, because of the events that were happening there. Absolutely. Um, I do want to bring up that she's so in her lifetime she experienced a lot of trauma and a lot of um, really harsh events that would have affected her psychologically I find it really interesting that at the I don't want to say at the end of her career because her career in general did not stop with art but in like kind of after art she became a psychoanalyst kind of going into that field of psychology to help other people um, work through their own traumas um the approach of psychoanalysis is especially like focused on how do events in your childhood affect your subconscious that's the whole idea behind it so i find it really fitting that she would eventually go into that. So one of the more interesting things about her being a psychoanalyst, like you said, was that it makes a lot of sense that she would be doing art therapy because art therapy it, at the time wasn't necessarily super explored. But I'm sure that she would have known from her own experience how effective it was mm-hmm. because she very clearly healed a lot of her trauma through her art. And um, it makes a lot of sense that she would do that in her future and, and you know, towards the end of her career. And um, what's especially interesting about her leaving the art world to go for this is that perhaps the art world became stifling because of its focus on capitalizing and making art as, you know, something for profit, mm-hmm. or making art for high society. And she was there because it was healing and it was an, an experience. And um, it just didn't fit with with the um, high society type of art world anymore. Thank you so much for tuning in on this episode about Ligia Clark. Join us next time for the next episode of Latinarte. Bye. Bye.